Epinephrine, commonly known as adrenaline, is a hormone and neurotransmitter in the body. It plays an important role in the fight or flight response by increasing blood flow to muscles, increasing the output of the heart, and heightening blood sugar levels. Adrenaline was first synthesized in 1904 by Friedrich Stoltz. Its structure contains three hydroxyl groups, a benzene ring, and an amine group, and is within the class of molecules known as the catecholamine. The synthesis of epinephrine stems from amino acids phenylphalanine and tyrosine. Phenylalanine is an essential amino acid, which means it must be obtained from our diet. 50% of all dietary phenylalanine is used for synthesizing tyrosine in the first step of epinephrine synthesis. Phenylalanine is converted to tyrosine through hydroxylation by enzyme phenylalanine hydroxylase with cofactors of oxygen and tetrahydrobiopterin. The first step is that a base extracts a hydrogen from this nitrogen on the tetrahydrobiopterin, causing the electrons to be dumped into the ring. The electrons transfer through the ring structure to where it makes a resonance stable anion. This negative charge directly attacks an oxygen molecule, which then binds to a hydrogen atom to make an alcohol. It is important to remember that in the body, protons and bases, along with water, are almost always readily available. This molecule now has a very weak oxygen-oxygen bond, which can easily be broken. The benzene ring attacks this weak oxygen-oxygen bond in order to obtain the hydroxyl group at the para position. It is important to note that the CH2 groups are ortho-para directors, with the stronger being para, which is why this hydroxyl group adds in the para position. Having this hydroxylated compound now gives rise to a carbocation intermediate, which the negative charge on the other end of the oxygen-oxygen bond can solve through an E2 reaction. The product of this reaction is tyrosine, and the other byproduct, known as carbinylamine tetrahydrobiopterin, can be reduced by NADH to the original tetrahydrobiopterin to be recycled in the next step of this reaction. The tetrahydrobiopterin molecule that we just recycled is used in the next step of the synthesis as well, showing how recycling is an important way to reduce waste in our bodies. The next reaction turns the tyrosine we just synthesized into 3,4-dihydroxyphenylalanine, DOPA for short, through tyrosine hydroxylase in a very similar reaction to the first. The molecule shown here on the left, once again, has a very weak oxygen-oxygen bond that can be easily broken. This time, however, the benzene ring has a hydroxyl group attached, which acts as a ortho-para director once again. However, since the para position of the benzene ring is already occupied by the carbon chain, the hydroxyl group goes in the ortho position with respect to the other hydroxyl group. Having this hydroxylated compound now gives rise to another carbocation in intermediate, which the negative charge on the other side of the oxygen once again solves through another E2 reaction and our DOPA product has been made. The next step of the synthesis involves changing DOPA into dopamine. In order to obtain this, DOPA must be decarboxylated through the use of cofactor vitamin B6. A base in the body can easily extract the proton from the hydroxyl group, which then causes this decarboxylation on the DOPA molecule. However, as you see, this negative charge has no resonance stabilization and thus cannot stay there. This negative charge goes to extract a proton from vitamin B6, which has a very stable conjugate base structure through resonance stabilization. The next step of changing dopamine to norepinephrine is a little bit more complex and involves cofactors of oxygen and ascorbate. The first step involves the ascorbate ion extracting a hydrogen from dopamine to produce an unstable anion, once again, which has no resonance structures, and this attacks the oxygen atom. This oxygen atom then attacks the ascorbate molecule and gets protonated, which forms an alcohol and also an anion. The negative charge transfers down to form a double bond with the oxygen, which then causes the double bond in the ring structure to move to the other oxygen and allow for deprotonation. The deprotonation occurs when the alcohol from the other molecule extracts a hydrogen and a molecule of water is lost through breaking the weak oxygen-oxygen bond. The oxygen on the other side of this bond can then be reduced by a molecule such as NADH, which is a source of H-, and the norepinephrine product is made. The only difference between norepinephrine and epinephrine is the methyl group bound to the nitrogen, so in order to obtain epinephrine we must methylate the norepinephrine molecule. 
The mechanism to turn the norepinephrine to epinephrine involves a cofactor of 5-adenosylmethionine, which has the following chemical structure. In this final step, the lone pair from the norepinephrine attacks the delta-positive carbon, and the electrons flow from the delta-positive carbon atom to the delta-negative sulfur atom. The positive nitrogen cation now loses a hydrogen to a base in solution, and the electrons are placed back on the nitrogen atom, and epinephrine is finally obtained.